But practice here is really, really important. All right, let's look at C2H4. All right, we'll put the carbons in the middle and the hydrogens outside. All right, and let's see, we have two carbons, each with four valence electrons, and we have four hydrogens, each with one valence electron, so eight plus four. We have 12 electrons here, total. All right, now I've drawn these structures many, many times, so I know already, because I've done it so many times, the single bonds are not going to cut it, and that we're going to need double bonds. When we do this, you'll see each carbon has eight valence electrons. All right. We have eight around each carbon, and each hydrogen has two, and we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons. So this would be a correct Lewis structure for C2H4. All right, let's look at ClO2 minus. So this is a polyatomic ion. Now the chlorine we know has seven valence electrons. Each oxygen contributes six, and it's got an overall negative charge, so we actually have one additional electron. All right, so seven plus 12 plus one equals 20. We have 20 electrons here. Now, another quirk that of writing Lewis structures is that um, when you have only one of one atom and multiple copies of another, that might be a sign that the one you only have one copy of might be the central atom. So let's try that here. All right, let's put the chlorine in the middle and the oxygens on either side. All right, um, let's try some single bonds. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We'll show our Lewis structure. Our in our Lewis structures, we will show all of our lone pairs. We can put some more around the oxygens. Uh, the chlorine right now, you can see, is electron deficient, so we can put some more electrons there. Uh, as I was talking, I totally lost track of how many electrons I've placed. So let's go count. Ready? Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh, I guess we're done. All right, so let's draw this over neatly and we'll show the uh, charge as well. All right, good form when you're drawing polyatomic ions. Remember, you put them in square brackets with the charge outside. Great. All right, let's look at the phosphate ion. Now, there are actually multiple structures that can be drawn for phosphate, um, but we're going to draw one that obeys the octet rule. All right, let's see. So phosphorus is in group 15, so it has five valence electrons. We have four oxygens at six each, and an, an extra three electrons. So four times six is 24, plus five, plus three, that gives us 32 electrons altogether. Great. Now let's see. Similarly to what we did before, I'm going to put the phosphorus in the middle and the oxygens outside. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I have one phosphorus and multiple oxygens. And it just seems like the best way to do it. All right. And I said we we're going to draw this structure to obey the octet rule. Let's see, let's put in single bonds everywhere. That's always a good place to start. So, so that's eight electrons. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. All right, well, let's see, I'm looking at the structure and I can see that clearly that there are eight electrons around the phosphorus. Each oxygen's okay. I've put in all 32 electrons, we counted. So all that remains is to draw my square brackets and put my three minus charge outside. Great. Let's do one last structure. We want to do H2CO. There are two hydrogens, each with one valence electron, plus four valence electrons from the carbon, plus six valence electrons from the oxygen. That gives us 12 electrons to play with. 
All right, now we know that when we have carbon, it's probably the central atom, so we'll put carbon in the middle. And I'll put the hydrogens outside and the oxygen up here. All right, let's start with single bonds. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay. Well, the oxygen is satisfied and the hydrogens are satisfied, but the carbon only has six electrons. So this is not an appropriate structure. If single bonds don't work, we go to double bonds. So let's try it again. We'll try double bonds this time. So now I have placed the same skeleton. I've placed eight of my electrons around. And if I look now, the carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons, and the hydrogens are satisfied. But I've only placed eight electrons, and I have four more. But the oxygen doesn't have the octet rule satisfied. So let's put those last four electrons on my oxygen atom. Ah, that's a much better looking Lewis structure, and this would be the correct structure we would want to record. Great. What about exceptions to the octet rule? Because the Lewis dot diagrams are really meant to work with pairs of electrons, when you end up in the rare cases where you have molecules with odd numbers of electrons, it doesn't really work that well. It doesn't um, describe these molecules all that well. So odd numbers of electrons, when they show up, will not quite follow the rules that we've been talking about. The classic example of this is nitrogen monoxide, which is a neurotransmitter and also uh, a component of air pollution. If we draw this, we know nitrogen has five electrons, valence electrons, and oxygen has six valence electrons for a total of 11 electrons, which is an odd number. We're not going to be able to draw a satisfactory structure that's going to follow the octet rule here. We just don't have enough electrons. So if we draw these, we can do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. This is one structure we can draw. Alternatively, we could put the two lone pairs on the nitrogen and the unpaired electron on the oxygen. We've got these two structures here. Now, ne neither are quite satisfactory in the sense that neither quite follow the octet rule. But we can't really handle this well within Lewis structures because it's designed to work with pairs of electrons and we just don't have any. Other exceptions to the octet rule are what I call electron deficient stru structures where the central atom does not have eight electrons. But again, it's one of these situations where you've put all the electrons in. These are not unheard of for compounds containing boron and beryllium. They tend to be quite reactive as a result. But if we want to draw a Lewis structure for boron trifluoride, the simplest Lewis structure we can draw only put six electrons around the boron. So this would be a, an electron deficient structure. And this is quite a reactive substance. You can draw some alternative structures that do follow the octet rule, but they have their own problems. Um, um, and that we don't normally think of Fluorine is having double bonds. Um, when you've learned about formal charge, which will be in a separate podcast, you'll see that this is not this structure that I'm uh, just finishing drawing is not believed to be the predominant species. It's not the favored drawing. And the original structure we drew seems to be a better representation of what's going on. So you do sometimes get these molecules that are electron deficient. They don't show up all that often. You should know that they exist.